all. I'm a, I'm a little, uh, little down, a uh, little low on energy right now. Um, could you all help me out just a little bit? Uh, I'm going to trust you to help me out just a little bit. Um, I'm going to start a chant, and I want you all to jump in on it, OK? Uh, so it goes like this. J S J S J S J S J S J S J S J S J D J D J D J D. All right, cool. Thank you, thank you. That gave me gave me the the stuff I need to keep going. Thank you. All right. So my talk is a semblance of success. Um, and I'm sure you've all seen something like this, uh, a stack where you start with built-ins, um, then you had shims on top of it, you have your framework, and then your application code. Um, but as I've been developing uh, a utility library, Lodash, over the last couple of years, I've seen some problems creep in with the bottom two, so the built-ins and shims. And so this talk will cover some of those issues. So, why built-ins? Why do we start with built-ins? The, the native JavaScript methods, things like array for each, filter, map, every, function bind, object.create, all of those things. Well, it's because we think they're faster, they're more feature-rich, uh, they've got that, that native syntaxy feel, um, and then there's, there's no dependencies required, no assembly required. They work out of the box. That's what we think, all right? But, and that's a big but, there is some issues, and it's not just one or two, it's several. So, so here's the first, and it's lackluster performance. Um, so before ES5 even existed, so going on 10 years now, these methods have existed in JavaScript engines in, in some engine or another, um, and then they became standardized. So for as, as long as they've existed, every filter um, for each index of have always been slower than a uh, simplified alternatives written in your own library code. Um, and it also turns out that there's some consistency issues. But to continue with performance, um, even ES6 methods aren't quite there yet. So map, set, weak map. Um, there's some issues with uh, bind across browser. So some are really good and some are really bad. And it just so happens like if you're writing stuff in Node, V8 is really bad with function bind performance. Um, then there's object-defined properties, which is slow. It's so slow that jQuery is pulling it out of their library because the usage was, was, was hurting their performance so much. Um, and then they're not immune from performance regressions. So there's current language in ES6 that may slow down certain methods. Uh, and so there's no guarantee that what was a fast built-in one version may not regress in the next because of the added load. Um, the next issue is there's no expansion. Shout out to Nintendo 64 expansion pack. Um, and what that means is that you can't add on to array prototypes or function prototypes or string prototypes, built-in prototypes. So if you want to extend functionality that your application is being built on, you're locked into just the set that is provided by the language or the, the emerging language because if you add your own array contains, for example, this has been in the news, uh, JavaScript news recently, uh, it turns out that you end up blocking progress of the specification because if your implementation doesn't align to a T with what's specified uh, in the emerging standard, there'll be conflicts and it could break the web. And the, uh, uh, the TC39 is, is you know, mandated not to break the web. They don't want to do that. So you're actually hurting progress. So like rest in peace array contains, we're not going to be getting that. Um, and who knows how many others are out there. I mean, these libraries have been extending these, these built-ins and it can cause problems when you're trying to expand. So you're locked in, you can't expand. Um, then there's two left feet. So right now we've got every modern browser has set and map support, but not all of them support them equally. So there's traps when you use these methods that you have to be aware of. You can't just shim them out and everything works. Um, there's also usability gaps that you can't extend beyond because that would break consistency with uh, shims. So for example, array for each, you can't chain with that syntax. It returns undefined. Um, the this binding in array reduce and reduce write doesn't exist. So you can this bind and filter and map, but not reduce. That's so weird. Uh, object define and object keys, they throw, and by that I mean some browsers will throw if you iterate, if you, if you uh, use them with DOM elements, they throw. 
Others throw if you don't provide objects. And even that behavior will change in ES6. Uh, then there's string, remove, or string trim, which by, by the specification will remove a certain amount of Unicode white space. But that Unicode standard keeps changing and evolving, and so what was once considered white space in one version may not be considered white space in another version. So it moves under your feet, um, and that's not desirable for me. Uh, and then there's typed arrays uh, they are in transition. So typed arrays started off in um, DOM land, right? So host objects. Sometimes when you go to inspect them, they'll say, uh, you'll say type of the, the typed array constructor, and it returns object, but it's a function. If you try to look at its internal class, uh, value, it'll say uh, typed array constructor instead of function. Um, so there's issues there, and, and they're different depending on like your version of Safari. So Safari 8 does something different than Safari 7. Uh, different versions of, of browsers will, will not act appropriately there. So you end up having two left feet. And if you try to shim these methods, like array methods, there's even compat issues. So for example, if you're, if you're caring about IE8, and that's why you're adding this shim, um, sparse arrays are treated differently even. So IE8 will treat an undefined literal in an array as sparse where no other browser will. So there's even inconsistency there when you try to shim. All right. So there are no silver bullets. Shimming is hard. Um, ES5 shim, great. The authors are passionate about it. Uh, but even then, mistakes get slipped through. And if you have a shim service that's delivering shims, uh, there's all kinds of issues there as well with uh, pull requests that are happening to fix them. So shimming is not guaranteed uh, uh, good or uh, that there won't be patches in the future. There's also uh, non-obvious side effects. So the issue with array contains was that it was expecting, um, the library was expecting it to be enumerable, but native array contains is non-enumerable. And so when you're shimming, you're usually shimming for environments that can't set enumerability in the first place. So that's this, this non-obvious side effect that can bite you or bite applications uh, that depend on that layer. And then they may change over time. So as I mentioned before, the behavior of object.keys is changing. So where uh, before it would error if you didn't pass an object, and now, or now it will uh, just return an empty array, which I think is the preferable behavior. But those, those changes, especially also with, with white, uh, uh, what's considered white space and other little tweaks, could trip you up. Um, so it's not guaranteed to, once it's implemented, to stay that way. Um, there's also issues with partial shims, and so every time someone brings up shims, they, they, they may slip into what's called shams. Um, and so here's the, the shams part of it. So when you, when you create shims, there's a lot of functionality that can't be created fully to simulate the actual function. So here's some methods that trip up. Uh, define properties uh, will trip up because you can't, you can't assign a getters, setters in some browsers. You can't do enumerability in some browsers. Um, get on property names may end up doing a for in loop, um, which doesn't account for things that are not enumerable. Um, there's issues with uh, prevent extensions and object.create. Object.create has issues when you try to pass null because there's no concept of, of proto, underscore, underscore proto um, in some browsers. Uh, some of them, like object freeze and object seal, will do nothing and others will just throw an error. So there's traps, if you use shims, you're putting like these traps in your code that are not really documented because you assume, hey, I've got this function. It exists, but it's not the full function. Um, so that's partial shims there. Um, so what can we do? There's, there's, there is a better way. Um, so you take that, that shims part of the stack and you replace it with a library. Um, Maybe Lodash. Maybe that's the one you want to do. Um, so libraries are liberating. Um, and so what that means is they, they aren't shackled by those restrictions of the shims. They, they can have consistent behavior in all supported environments. They aren't restricted to the, the poor performance of the platform because they can do all these optimizations uh, under the hood. Um, and they aren't tied to all of the corner cases that the spec has to account for. So there's more opportunity to optimize, and you don't have to wait for a browser vendor to optimize. You can just swap in that new version of that library and get that performance gain. Um, you can do things, and I'll, and I'll show this in a second with the callback shorthand. So some of the cool things is, um, before I mentioned, hey, you're locked into the features that are specified in the language, so you can't extend them. So that means you miss out on all this really cool stuff, uh, like callback shorthands, 
And so I'll go into that. So we've seen code like this. This is array filter. And it's saying, hey, filter all of the elements that, uh, that have a truthy enabled property, right? Well, that can be shortened up into something like that. That's much nicer, and it's impossible to do with shims, but it's painless with a library layer. Uh, so if you have a library, you could, there was, there was a time when this functionality didn't exist, but then you update a version of it, and then you get that right there. Without having to rewrite your foundation, you are able to start using this syntax. There's something like this here, which is checking for the value of a property on an object when you're filtering. And instead, you can write that like this here, which is much shorter and much nicer. Um, or this one here, which is a deep partial match, which avoids a much more complicated uh, callback uh, that you would not be necessarily wanting to write. So this allows you to partially match any object that contains the property armor that has a status of on. The next is faster array search. So this is something you can do when you don't depend on shims. Um, index of and last index of perform a linear search of your values. So if your value happens to be at the very end and you're doing index of, it's going to have to check every single value. But with Lodash, or with a library layer, you can specify that this is a sorted array and that you want to use a binary search algorithm instead, getting a much faster search. And that's impossible if you have a shim. Uh, something else you can do is you can leverage. So before I said, hey, uh, some of these methods, and I labeled set as one of them, are slow. But you can get creative when you have that lib layer and leverage the built-ins for what they're good at. So in this case, set is awesome for uniquing an array, because every value in a set is unique. So you take your 1,000 element array, and you just pop every value, or you just, you just add every value to the set. And so if there's duplicates, they automatically get taken out. So they are, they are not processed there. And then you read the set back out when you're querying it. So when, instead of doing index of over and over and over to get unique values in an array, you just say, hey, does this set have this value? And it goes, yeah, sure, sure I do. Or no, no, I don't. Um, and that's something you can do with, uh, with these, these kinds of faster array uh, searches that are not possible with shims or the native um, functionality at the moment. The other cool thing is shortcut fusion. So here is an example of before I had shortcut fusion. All right, now, now here's the example of when I did have shortcut fusion. It's the same code. I didn't have to change anything. If developers are writing and using the chaining syntax, they get shortcut fusion for free. And so what shortcut fusion is, is instead of doing, uh, say you have an array of 1,000 elements. And so instead of doing a map over all of those 1,000 elements and then performing a filter on those 1,000 elements and then taking 10 items on whatever that filtered was, instead you do something like this, which is you, you, you merge, you fuse, the callbacks together, so the iterate and the predicate are executed uh, sequentially per each element in the array until the take of three, in this case, for this presentation here, uh, this, this animated demo here, is, is um, met. And then it exits out. So that significantly cuts down on your iteration. And you get that for free um, using Lodash or any other library layer. So this isn't really about like Lodash. It's about sticking with having a thin library layer in between you and the native, so you know when you can drop down and, and use the good parts without having to be shackled by everything else. So um, in, in closing, I just want to say uh, libraries are liberating. Um, I know it's tempting, and there is this, this push to just use built-ins. Um, but I think that if you stick with a little bit of a library layer, it's going to save you a lot of grief um, in the end. Thank you.